My name is Ron. Have you ever done photographs before? Uh, I've done photography, but on an amateur basis. I've done some is like a case history when I was doing uh, some college work. I've done a bit more when I had my own business, which I had a behavioral science lab. But most generally, it was like uh, videotape back when it was old, real to real, like 71, 72. I would attempt to capture the absolute depression that exists in this, in this particular area. Because I think that okay. homelessness needs a particular vehicle. Okay. You know, we've arrived at a point where uh, men are reverting to back to the cave. It's somewhat asinine and ridiculous, particularly since this is America. I keep saying, I'm the prophet of doom and gloom. I don't want to sound so pessimistic, but I am really upset. I feel that we, we should have started this before it had reached this proportion. We have allowed this to deteriorate, the situation to, in every city in this country. The situation is such that I don't know how they're going to turn it around. What's the solution? I think that uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You want to look at your photos? Uh, probably horrible, I no, know. No, they're wonderful. They're absolutely wonderful. I took them? Yeah. Those cameras are terrific. I mean, it's not me, it's the camera. No, it's you, it's your eye. Oh, this came out all right. I wanted to show that this is underneath the establishment, all this. Yeah. Uh, food line, see? In the eyes of the establishment, you see? Mm -hmm. All for food. It, it communicated a little bit of the message anyway. I was trying to get across that we really have a problem. Where did you grow up? Connecticut. Uh, I attended the University of Vermont in Burlington. Vermont. So what did you decide to do? Well, I went into business. <laughs> And I, uh, I landscape penthouses oh, yeah, in New York City. And uh, I rarely talk about this because uh, it sounds so uh, contradictory. I remember leaving work and participating in the Re in Resurrection City and Martin oh, Luther really? King's campaign in, in Washington. I, I think I uh, began to make changes a after that Point. For example, I find this not very different from uh, from being in Resurrection City and Poor People's Campaign at that time. People see you here and they say, oh, you know, uh, you certainly are a failure and so forth. I, and I don't, I don't look at life in that fashion. I, I, I can't explain it exactly. Some people are, are negative and they're, they're negative attitudes. They throw things all over the place, and I, and, I, and I, every time I see that, I say, why do you do why? that? Because that's what causes the problem. And uh, I believe the heat is on, I really do. I think that's it. All of this, like now they say they want everybody off the street. What they do, they move their stuff out into the street, when the police go, they move it right back again. Well, I can't play that cat and mouse game, you know, yeah. I just go. There's two sides to every story, and the homeless, are not acting right either. This is not our property. This is the, this belongs to the city. The least we can do is make it neat and have it decent. Uh, you have to be very cautious that if you receive a check or something like that, they rob people right in front of the check cashing places.
look at that. Okay. What happened was they had a fight over there and they beat him up real off bed and he was laying on the ground and when the ambulance came, that's when I was coming walking by him. Like he was going by there and I go What goes on here at night? We drink and uh, we talk to each other and we joke to each other. Nah, we just play around. Did you enjoy this project? Oh yeah, we no longer the city tried to take you for you way to take different pictures. I took pictures over at my sister's house. She looked very good. She looked very good. Yeah, a little bit of places over here and uh on Broadway? Yeah? Oh, yeah, that was good fun. I enjoyed it. I went downtown, and I went to Olvera Plaza. They have some people dancing here. And I took those big ones over there, and they were nice. Good. I hope. Let me see. Deja ver que hice yo. Muy bueno. Look at the bird. That came out pretty good, I think. This is a jailhouse. No, it ain't. Remember that the liquor store over there? They got those bars on there? Uh, they are the securities over here. Yeah, they're nice people over here. Let's Look at this this lady. She's one of those, uh, what is it, SPI? Oh, those gray trucks, those brown trucks? UPS, yeah. There's a guy that comes over here and they go around picking up the cardboard all over. He sells that over there. I think he gets about $27. Oh, this is where this, where they help out the uh, homeless. There's no way in the world for a person, anyone, to go homeless or hungry on Skid Row because you got all the missions and the people are so very nice. They come by and you even have their schedule. You know who these guys are? They were some bums, you know, laying up there in the, in the alley, you know. <laughs> That's Ruben's ex ex girlfriend. But she calls him dead. That's, that's my girlfriend. Woo, look at that. Oh my God, look at this one too. Era se está bonita porque están mis dos novias ahí. He said he's got two girlfriends there. No, that's your mother. Back to mama. When my mother was alive, she used to take them, you know, let them spend nights for the weekend. Me and my, my kids, we don't get along no more. They're supposed to be a, a, a father's best daughters. Well, they loved me. When I was in prison, they came to visit me. What were you in prison for? For uh, three burglaries and, uh, and uh, two assaults. They must be pretty girls. Well, last time when I saw them was about three months ago. I miss them. I miss them. When, when I, I used to spend a lot of time with them. Oh, that's my uh, homeboy. He is the only one that I am here for, because I like him like, like a brother. Yeah. He's not my real brother. Mm -hmm. I just like him like a real brother. And if I was in a situation that he couldn't get out of, it, I would, you know, get him off of it, yeah. even if, I, if it cost him my life. I don't really like buddying up not much, you know. I mean, I like to be by myself most of the time, but uh, I got interviewed there at the welfare office. I talked to this woman for about 10 minutes. She okayed me for a check, you know, for, I don't know, six months a year. She never did tell me. But uh, I just couldn't live in them hotels down there. What happens if, if you're sick or something? Yeah, I had a uh, staph infection uh, last spring. I went out to the county hospital. I got some antibiotics and stuff. It's okay, you know. But, uh, but uh, I don't like hospitals. If you could do something, what would you do? <laughs> the CCC camps and the WPA. What's that? Civilian Conservation Corps. And uh, they were paying them, let's see, in the late 30s, I think they were getting $28 a month. And they 
barracks to stay in, they work. The majority of these people don't want to work. It's disgusting. You know, I, I go to work, I ain't crying, I don't blame nobody. What kind of work do you do? I'm a carpenter, actually. Really? But, uh, but see, I was tending bar downtown years ago. I've been over in Arizona, built houses over there. 120 degrees in the summertime, oh. take off a t-shirt, stand up by itself so much salt on it. I got took pictures of the bridges and stuff where I used to live. This is that bridge down there. Uh -huh. I lived under all those bridges. I shot that at night underneath the bridge over here. I says, Gilbert, let me cover your head. I want to shoot your picture. <laughs> this is Jim under the bridge, and that's the cat. I just came from over there. Now, now this here is Frankie. He lives up there. Look at that tramp. Sitting on the old box with rags in it. That's his, that's his hutch. That's oh, really? where he lives. Uh -huh. Well, I, I can explain these shots. You see, you see these are three people. Uh -huh. This one here, I, I like Frankie. Yeah. I See, Frankie's a very reclusive guy. Uh -huh. He goes out here and he works, he makes money. This one here, that's Randy. Randy, he's a pretty good guy. And no comment. I took some of the music center just to send back to my mother. My mother likes trees and stuff, you know, in right. New York. That's what I miss out here. Yeah. You know, that's the old trees. This is my friend Bill. He's a heck of a nice guy. I've known him for three years. He's a head carpenter over there. At the music center? Yeah. Do you ever go down to Fifth in Town, that section of the city? I'll tell you, I live up here. The people who live downtown and, and all that stuff. I don't even go downtown much. It's mm -hmm. crazy. The people are crazy. So this is where you live, down here? Yes, right yeah. here. Uh, Fifth in Town. town. What's it all about? Taking photos with a throwaway camera. And oh. I'll take all the pictures and put it into a video. So what but channels are going to be on? The... What, PBS? You want pictures of the area? So whatever you want. Whatever you want to take pictures of. Oh. But yeah. through your eyes. How you want to yeah. see your life. But... Oh, I don't know nothing about my camera. Oh. Oh. Come on, let's all take one together. Okay, let's take one together. Let's take one together. All right, come on. Oh, oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hey come, now. On, come on, come on, come on. Hey now. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, come on, it's my turn. Come on, over that way. Are you, are you homeless? Yeah. How long have you lived out here? Oh, I've been out here about three and a half years now. I've been out there 18 years, baby. How did you do in the rain? It must have been pretty bad, huh? Oh, I didn't get wet. No? No. I put the plastic covered it, covered it up. Got all wet. Yeah. Soaking wet. Yeah. No place to go. All, all of my blankets, everything. Cause it, start raining like in the middle of the night. Do you have any problems with the city trying to move you around or are they oh, pretty? Every so often the police come and make us move yeah. to another spot. Sometimes it gets so crowded, you know, so we right. have to kind of move around. Here, there, everywhere, bouncing around. What do you think would be a solution? I'm too old for a job. Yeah. Anybody going to hire me? And also a qualification. Okay. You have to have qualification. Okay. Get a little GR, which don't go very far. Uh, more recipients for money and less people giving it. And uh, uh, this, this cannot go on. But I think certainly those of us out here on us, we'd better become uh, realistic. It's very hard to analyze because I, uh, at one at one point, I say, well, it's jobs, and then I see what people people who are receiving welfare and so forth, you know, they'll as soon as they get the money, they're elated, and then three or four days later, they're saying, uh, can I borrow a dollar? I got a picture of Ragdoll while he was asleep oh. with his bottle in his hand. Thank oh, you, yeah. Then I had him pose for me once while he was awake. Who's Ragdoll? He's you can... just like he sounds. That's Ragdoll. That's oh. our favorite man down here. We take care of him. That's Ragdoll, man. Where my picture at? I love you.
you guys so much. Now, one in there, your old man came out. Good. Her boyfriend's in the program, but me and Deb is real close. They came out really good. Yeah, they came out great. All of them that I like. You guys, I'm telling you, your your eye, the composition was just wonderful. Like I said, volunteer work fine. Come pick me up, whatever. For real. I know how to read right. You know, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Gotta be doing it, not so much the money. No, it's not the money. It's just nice meeting both of you guys. You know it's not just for the money. That's at LA Mission, right down the street. And you can go to the mission and eat and shower and get uh -huh. clean clothes. Did you do any pictures in the shelter? No, I put all the pictures out here. I prefer to take mine here because this is for real. The shelter is so for real. I prefer no. to take mine here. This reality out here. Out of the city, uh, the city just stresses me. I get ulcers, I can't sleep at night, and diarrhea, and everything is crazy. You know, I just can't hang. Up here is serenity. You know? They call me the Robin Hood. Yeah. We've known each other for years. Hey, where do you come from? Uh, Colorado. And what brought you to Los Angeles? I don't know, I was a mechanic. Uh huh. And, uh, I was working down at Torrance and they sold the station to some Chinese people five years ago. <laughs> well, I just didn't have any ambition to get another job after that. When you were little, what did you think you'd be when you grew up? You know, I would think I'm going to be 18 in four years. I can do anything I want to do. And you? Me? Uh, my dad told me I was going to be a bum. Uh, okay. No. He wishes my command. <laughs> So how'd you like the project? We had fun. I got some good pictures. I they take pictures of my pan flute. Dude, I play and I get a gold pan in front of me and I even play do my thing. People throw money in the pan, you know. <laughs> Yeah. I get you drunk at night. Can't see. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite shot? These are so that one. For funny. Yeah. Uh, we're for funny, we'll put serious one. This one. Oh, I like this. This is Bilesville Camp. See the uh -huh. tent down uh -huh. in the picture? This looks like out of like a fantasy movie or some kind of movie or something, doesn't it? Throwing horse. Does it throwing horse? Yeah. He's invading Rome. Yeah. Yeah. Up here, up here, up here, up here. Oh, what a nice. You guys are naughty. You guys are naughty. Yeah, we got a little crazy. Well, that was fun doing that. Yeah, that was a kick. You can't take the bush out of the brother, but you can take the brother out of the bush, you know? So where they took all the nudist colonies out. That's the whole problem with the world. If you elect me for president, I'll make a lot of nudist colonies. And we'll all be happy. Never. This one's kind of nice. I like to see little love showing on the pitch in motion, you know? Are you guys a couple? Yeah, we're about 17 years. 
we live here. You know? Yeah. You know, I don't bother nobody. We take care of our own responsibilities. We beat each other up here at the table once in a while. Hey, ain't well, you know, wrong with that, you know? You can't turn down 4,000 acres. And if For you sure. don't bother nobody, you got it made. You can live on top of the White House if they can't see you. Well, there's nothing about woods, you know? Right. No fires, no breaking branches, no making wooden, no hammering up there with wood, you know, no no buildings. Have you up there and calling it all night long? <laughs> it was fun when we first moved here. 85 was nice, but boy, mm -hmm. it was lately. How is it that you keep a lot of people from coming up here where you are, though? He yells people. at them. You can hear him clear down Hollywood Boulevard when he's done. I took some pictures like um, West Hollywood and just basically around Hollywood itself. So did you enjoy the program? Yes, I did. I had fun doing it. It was great. It was exciting. Yeah. It was different. Were people receptive? Uh, yeah, they, they kind of asked questions first, like why and where their picture was going and their picture was not going to end up in a porno book on somebody else's body. Gag me. Gag me. <laughs> I took a couple yeah. pictures of myself, but most of them was like most of my best friends. Because if I leave, I go back to New York, I want memories. How long have you been in L.A.? I'm um, about four months. It wasn't what I expected. This is at donut time. That's where we made sure we hang out. Those were my initials. I had to get that shot. My homies. Oh, yeah. You know? Those are my two best buddies. This is my brother. You've seen him before. Prince? Yeah, I've seen him. Uh -huh. but I'm going to see a picture of me. Chanel. Yeah. No, Chanel. not that one. Oh, where you get that one from? Um, that's what's Hollywood. Oh, Rage. Oh, man. Marilyn Monroe. Not the real one. Just the lunch it was totally. This one. I like this one, though. Oh, they were funny. I remember them. I took it of the vicinity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's either positive or negative for you. And I, I took it positive and negative. What happened to you? I was. Incarcerated. <laughs> I can't believe it. I was walking across the street and like I saw the sunset and it was like really, it was like purple. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. So the police stopped me and said, hey, you were jaywalking. And they ran my name and I had a warrant. Like, oh. <laughs> Did they actually like really incarcerate you into like heavy duty stuff or did they keep you in like a pending place? No, that's the term with the general population. This one guy, he was chained up next to me in Beverly Hills Court, and this guy, 21 years old, and got 33 years. <laughs> Let's see, eligible for parole in 17 and a half. <laughs> and I thought I was going to go for six months. <laughs> and I was like upset, honey. But <laughs> 17 and a half years, I said. So, how long have you been in the mainstream of life? Please tell me how it is. As you can tell, I'm not normal. How long have you been out in the streets? Me, about six years. I went through six birthdays and six days at Denny's. I get free food at Denny's for my birthday. That's, that's how I know how long I've been here. On and off for about right 10 years. Where are you from? Oklahoma. Oh, yeah? And yeah. you? Louisiana. That's where I was born. Do you work at all? Uh, I get GR. When I was a little kid, I wanted to be a photographer. Then. Then, then I got old and decided I wanted to be a rock star. So. <laughs> Have you had a chance to be a rock star? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. in New York. Yeah, I've got a lot of friends and a lot of local bands here. So. Metallica and um, Suicidal Tendencies. Suicidal Tendencies, yeah. It's a, it's a Venice-based band that's very political active. The only way this state can get healed up and everything is to have a miracle. And so I'm a for God. How'd you guys do? Oh, okay, I guess. Um. I got some, a couple of really good shots. One or two that might be might be really disgusting to you, but they're part of my life anyway, so hey. Where's that wall the with all that writing? Under the bridge. 
that I live in. Well, see, there's walls behind me, yeah. in front of me, on this side of me, all around me, there's, there's walls. So there's just one small door that goes underneath there. There's walls around me, so it doesn't bother me that much. I got some friends right there, too. It's, it's like a, like, like a, almost like a cave or something, actually. That's scary. So is it safe to be in there? Um, yeah, but, but not, if I'm with, not if I'm not with you. Don't go down there. Because uh, Toothless, he just got out of the pen. He's jumpy. He scared himself. That's that white guy that you saw the walk past there. That's Toothless. Yeah. Very jumpy person. <laughs> if I just had uh, like more light on the bridge or something, I, I could show you everything. You know, All the poems and everything. And there's one about troll women. See, we're called trolls because we went under a bridge. And um, we have poems about troll women, life in LA, you know, all kinds of stuff. It's pretty interesting. It's not fun or anything like that, but, you know, it's, I don't know. Do you I started out as a runaway, and, and then I worked myself up to being a homeless non-graduate, so. <laughs> and you graduated to what? More homeless. Uh. What effect do you think homelessness will have on the children? I think that we're coming to the end of a cycle and the beginning of a new one. It may not be so violent, but uh, it's going to be very difficult because of education. I think uh, if, if these kids today, if the children and grown-ups as well, if we don't move into a, a cycle of really, like the Japanese have done, into, into really pushing education more, uh, we're going to fall behind badly, I think. I see uh, so many women out here who are pregnant, who have, who are going to bear their children right here. And uh, so, what, 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 a, what chance does that child have against, say, a child who's born into a home with a library, for example? You know, it, 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 it just goes. It just, a, it's just a vicious cycle. So, what do you do? You know what you're going to have, a boy or a girl? I want a boy. We both want a boy. You marrying? I'm working in the program. It goes back to family background. These are all couples now. I'm the only single one out here. All these are, are twosomes. And in most of these folks, if they, if, if uh, uh, what has happened, welfare became a way of life for, may say, more than a generation. No, it, it, was, it was not meant to be that way. The leadership probably has to come from, uh, from the top. And that's why I'm hoping that uh, people who are progressive and have ideas about solving the problem, it's going to take quite a bit of uh, thought. It's the family value thing again, you know? And uh, where do you start? But as you say, you have to start somewhere, and we have to, we have to go forward, and we must do this. We, we have, have to go, go forward. forward, we must do this.